What's up guys, I'm Daniel Glauser and I'm here with the Homestead Builders. Jesse here, Kylie Nichols. Are we filming a build show over here or is this an 80s hair band music video? <laughs> we got a lot of fun for you today. We are out in Brenham, Texas and we're going to be using fog of the blower door to see this really good house that Jesse built. If we can find a couple of minor details that can be tweaked better. Lots to learn here. Today's build show, blower door testing with the fog. Let's get going. All right, guys, by way of introduction, let me introduce you to my buddy, Jesse, with Homestead Builders. We're outside of Brenham, Texas. Jesse, uh, I'm curious, how long have you been watching my videos? Oh, gosh, it's probably going on seven, eight years at this point. <laughs> I love it. So, Jesse, this house uh, is an interesting house in that you're using Zip System as the air barrier, right? Um, and this house will get some open cell foam on the inside, but we're visiting you pre-drywall, pre-insulation, and you told me, Matt, you know, I made a really good envelope on the house where everything should be airtight all the way up to the roof deck, conditioned attic on this house, by the way. But we're not, we don't have any spray foam in yet. We've just used basically some tape and some caulk and some sealant in a few places. And you ran a pre bloater test in this house, right, Jesse? Yes, sir. Yes, and what, sir. what'd you end up with? Uh, so far, we're about 2.3, 2.4 uh, pre, kind of some things we know we need to fix. That's really good. So in other words, at this stage, no insulation, no drywall for air tightness, simply the zip system sheathing on the outside. And frankly, a few tricky details. He's got an attached garage, not a carport, right? Uh, and he's got a porch in some places, a few other tricky details. 2.3, that's real good. I mean, that's what a lot of builders are shooting for when the house is done, let alone this phase of construction. So Jesse, tell me about a couple of details I'm seeing out here. What is that gray tape I'm seeing at the foundation? Yeah, we use the Sega's products, the Fintrum tape, which it adheres to the concrete really well. So it's just an easy, It's we found it's the easiest step to, to kind of seal that bottom plate. We also like using the quick flash boots yeah, for awesome. some of the smaller stuff. We've now gotten our HVAC and plumbers to start stocking them. Overflow drain, is that what I'm saying? Yeah, the overflow drain from the yep. condensate. Um, and then just a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of the zip system liquid flash. Yep just kind of hit the spots. It's nice, we got a good rain and we kind of walked back after and any nails that we saw that had any rust on them, initial rust, we just went ahead and hit them because we know they're gonna get water eventually. Fantastic. Now, Jesse, I'm noticing you got two bump outs on this side of the house. It looks to me like you sheathed the bottom of those already and then taped all the way around. So those are already totally air sealed, right? That's right. So our goal with our air sealing is to be as tight as we can possibly get without relying on foam, even though we do like using foam in the roof deck based yep. on our climate and having our conditioned attic and all that. It's it's just not our main source of air sealing. Yeah. For my Northern builders out there, we're in Texas, we don't have a frost line. We usually have massive rocks, so we don't, we don't have basements here typically. This is slab on grade house, so a lot of times the mechanicals are up in the attic. And by spray foaming up to the ridge on the attic, now all my mechanicals are within the air conditioned space. I've done that a bunch over the years. That's a great detail, Jesse. Now, now you told me when I came out though that I was gonna see the kind of Scott True method of monopoly framing. Can you talk me through that? Yeah, so we've, uh, whenever you posted that video of Scott True on YouTube, it was like a light bulb went off for me. I was like, my framer does not wanna do monopoly. He wants to do what he does every day. Yeah. And I've asked him, what would you rather do? And he said, all day I would rather put a some zip system sheathing underneath the soffit. On the soffit. Continue some tape around the fascia, the subfascia, mm -hmm. and then tape to the roof decking yep. and create a full enclosure with the, all of the rafter tails. Got it, got it. I mean, that's a great budget way to get a really airtight house and you've proven that with a 2.3 prior to any insulation. Now it's interesting, you've got this uh, blue peel and stick up here in the roof deck. Is that just standard OSB underneath that? Yeah, we, we went with standard OSB to try the peel and stick as opposed to the zip system with the tape. And then coming back, we usually come back with a synthetic underlayment mm -hmm. after the zip and try to skip a step, yep. just do peel and stick on this job. Um, and we think it's gonna be a, a great waterproof, but it has it performed as an air barrier as well as we had hoped. Yeah, you mentioned to me that you did a blower test where you pressurized the house and you actually saw a little pillowing 
on that That's membrane. Right. So you're actually getting some pretty good airflow through there, aren't you? So it sticks really well to itself, uh -huh. but that commodity OSB, if you peel up a little piece of it, you can see little specks of, of uh, all the OSB just stuck to it. Yeah. So it's it's not sticking to the substrate as well as we would have liked. Yeah, makes sense. Now, if you do six, eight inches, 10 inches of open cell on the inside, you're gonna seal that up, right? So that's not the end of the world, but it is interesting to see that uh, we tried to save a little money on that, but really the zip system would have been maybe the better choice. Yeah, yeah, for sure. At least taping, you know, the seams yeah. first yeah. and then coming back with like a, 3m or a fintrum tape or a, a, a sega fintrum so but learning we learned on we that learned, one and yeah that's we're right gonna do it better the next one and i noticed it looked like where your fascia board met that peel and stick it looked to me like there was some fish mouse there i wonder if that happened as you were blower door testing it was making air come out of there so if you would have had zip on that roof we could have we could have put a piece of tape on there to prevent that now again the spray foam will handle that that's not the end of the world but i think that's uh, that's what I've learned a lot over the years is I make a mistake. Uh, it's not the end of the world, right? I'm still half of what code requires here, but there's a better way to do it next time. So that's how we learn. Oh well. yeah, for sure. I think we'll, we'll still be well within what we designed for the HVAC system. So yep. that's, what's important. So we promised these guys, we would fog up the house and we would see if we can find some leaks and learn some things between the two of us, where that happened. How about we meet you on the inside and let's see where we can find some leaks. Hey, actually, before we look for those leaks, one other thing I wanted to show you, both on the back porch of the house and here in this garage that's attached, if you look, Jesse's done a great job of running zip system sheathing up to the roof deck. And then he's also sheathed across that wall that separates between the house and the garage. And Jesse, I really like this detail that you've done on these outlets. Will you walk me through what you did there? Yeah, we've just got standard blue plastic boxes. Um, and then on the inside, we've taken it's just your standard great stuff spray foam foamed around them and then taken some putty pads that we usually use for sound barrier type stuff and we've just covered all the holes basically the whole thing anywhere where there's air leaks on those boxes that's awesome and you know the fans going and we're fogged inside let's see if we can feel any leakage on those boxes i don't know man that feels pretty dang tight to me i'm not feeling anything come out of there that's impressive jesse and those aren't exotic materials either. I mean, canned foam, uh, super easy. The uh, putty pads are a little harder to find though. Putty pads, we got them on Amazon. We got a box of 10 and we use maybe two of them. I'm not job. seeing anything. So we're like anything. on our third job with that package of putty pads. So we're That's just gonna awesome. keep using them. That's a great detail for really hardly any money at all. Very impressive. Let's go see if we can find Jesse, anything coming underneath, let's say door sills, around windows and doors, that sort of thing. Matt, have you met my uh, site superintendent? I haven't. Kyler, nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. Good looking house, man. You did some nice job. Now, Kyler, you pointed this out to me. We've got a little bit of fog coming out underneath this door. Did you expect that? Yeah, so with a typical door installation, a lot of people will do a sill pan out of Alexel mm -hmm. and make a U-shape um, water barrier. Yep. Uh, what we opted to do this time was take a strip of hardy, tap con it into the concrete, and then make a liquid flash dam so then it's air sealed and then also it's up off the concrete, it's water barrier. And then now we were gonna have a bead of Lexel from the inside where we can have a controlled environment, put that bead there versus smearing that Lexel all around, oh, yeah. sliding it back and forth. Um, this it's crazy to see how much fog's coming out of there. Now we do have Mark uh, behind the scenes. You can't see with the fog machine closer so you can really see it. But that pressurizing, when we're pressurizing the house of the blower door, you can see how much air is coming out of there. I'll tell you what, Kyler, can we throw you inside to, uh, to cock it and we'll see if we can see real time how that changes? Sure. All right, check this out. I bet we'll get a bunch of fog coming out. All right, so Kyler's taking Lexel and he's basically using it on the backside of that Endura sill. Uh, cool to see the Builders First Source logo on there. They're a big build show sponsor, by the way. 
But as he's caulking that, oh, I can tell already he's caulking it. Look, it's that air, that air leak is gone. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Jesse, have you used much Lexel before? Yeah, we always have a couple of cans or uh, tubes, I guess you'd say, yeah. on site. We've got the big stretch. We've, we're big fans of it. The nice thing about Lexel is it sticks really well to concrete. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I like it. Now, it's not a um, water-based like Big Stretch is, so it's a little hard to get off your hands, right. but it does seal really, really nicely to concrete. Uh, interesting, Jesse, that not, I don't see any fog coming out from the rest of these bottom plates that you've taped. That's a nice detail. And I, had we not done that and just used regular sill sealer, we would have seen fog coming out of there. Sure. Yeah. And I also think it's really interesting, Jesse, if you haven't seen this before, guys, what he did was he ran his exterior sheathing all the way up to the roof line and then had his carpenters frame the ceiling in this porch area and it looks like you lagged that uh, ledger board through maybe with some uh washer headed lags is that right yeah some timber lock uh timber lock screws yeah. the whole thing's leisured and then we put uh, some pressure blocks in between just to, for extra yeah so solid blocked in between those rafters and those rafters are sticking all the way back through into the attic and then I think it's interesting, Jesse, I really like how you kind of pre, um, pre-insulated those, pre-air yeah, sealed those. pre-air sealed them. We've got the great stuff, uh, just can foam. Can foam in there. Just kind of picture framed them where the, where the bird block um, kind of sits between the rafters. And I don't see any fog coming out of there. There's not to, not to say there might be one or two CFMs coming out of that space right now, but there's nothing obvious coming out of there, which I would say means that there's probably... Uh, even more air sealing that's going to happen when you get to that open cell foam installation when we get to that in the attic. Oh yeah, for sure. I think the, the open cell foam, when we put that in the attic, it'll just kind of be the suspenders. Yeah. So we've kind of got our zip and all of our exterior air barriers as our belt and then have that last layer just uh, of comfort with that uh, open cell spray foam. I really like that. And as a side note, uh, if you're ever interested in going even tighter at this phase before that insulation, uh, have you ever seen Aero Barrier before? Oh, I've seen it. I have not used it. Air yeah, travel could be an option ways. here yeah, to a... do that extra uh, kind of micro caulking and all those kind of minor spots yeah. where there's a little bit of air leakage. But that's a great point. Uh, one last thing I want to do before we leave. I'm curious if we can see any air leakage out of that fireplace. Let's go see if we can fog around the fireplace yeah. and see if there's anything coming out of that roof. Zone. Yeah, sounds great. Okay, we'll see you in a minute. So we're back at the house. Uh, we've got drywall in now. We've got our spray foam insulation. Uh, we fixed a couple spots that we knew that we had to fix. We blow our door. We did a blower door again uh, earlier today, and we got 0 0.6 ACH 50. So that is just about passive house level. So we're we're super excited about that. All right, let's end the video in the fog. I'm curious from each one of you what you learned from fogging this house. Let's start with Daniel. I'm sorry I didn't get you on in the middle of the video. Daniel was behind yeah. the scenes, <laughs> putting the blower door up, running the blower door, running around the house. Daniel, what'd you think? Well, for me, it just comes down to the thing that I always talk about is paying attention to the details. Yeah. And these guys have done a fantastic job with some simple attention to detail, um, great use of the products that they used, and yep. really, and it showed in the score. Yeah, for sure. Jesse, what'd you think, man? Uh, definitely the, the peel and stick on, as an air barrier. It's not really, doesn't really act as an air barrier. Yep. Do our air sealing next time and use that just as our water barrier. Yeah, it makes sense. How air. about you, Kayla? Yeah, that's a great takeaway right there, right? It's all those minute details that if you don't get them right, and you guys nailed 98% of the details on this. But I, I would tell you that even though I've been doing this for a long time, I'm, I always learn something. I always realize, oh shoot, I missed something. Like at my house, when we came for that blower door, I realized I missed two or three penetrations, the electrician had drilled that didn't get sealed. Uh, you know, it's all these minor things that add up and you expect this like crazy low score and it's not there. It's really hard to get to those crazy low scores. I'd be curious what you, you end up blowing after insulation gets sprayed on this house. I suspect you'll go down at least another half point or more. And then don't forget, you've got some amount of leakage that you just can't control. That's windows and doors where, where windows meet and move and operate. Uh, you probably have some backdraft dampers on your exhaust fans that are leaking. All that kind of stuff. You're never going to seal that up 100%. It's extremely hard to get to that final point. And the last thing I'd mention too, I expected this fireplace to leak even more than it did. Uh, we looked with our eyes from the ground. We tried to fly the drone. 
it's really hard to see. There's a little bit of fog coming out of there. I don't know if you guys uh, have any theories for what's causing that. I think it's the joints at all of our flu connections. Yeah. I think there could be, uh, we could put some of that uh, high rated, the fire caulking. Yeah, fire caulk. And put that around all of those, but I'm not really worried about like that tiny, tiny bit. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you've already made code, even if you were building this house in upstate New York. Uh, and we're in Texas, right? So you've certainly met code around here and you're definitely going to get lower when you get in, uh, both insulation and you should be a little lower when you hit drywall too, right? Yep. Drywall still acts as an air barrier. So guys, really, really good work. Go follow Homestead Builders over on the gram and also we'll put a link to them if you're anywhere near Brown and Texas. Terrific uh, young builders here just doing a really good job nailing the details. Guys, if you're not currently a Bill Showed subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. You know, we've got new content here. Every Tuesday and every Friday, you guys know how I finish up my videos. Follow me on Facebook or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Bill Show. Show.